Hey, let's do a quick tour of Microsoft Word. Um, so even if you're familiar with Word, there's a few tricks you might know that I might be able to help you with. So um, I'm going to start here with the File tab, which is sort of our most basic one. There we go. It has your Save and Save As. And remember, these two features are different. Save As allows you to name it and to place it somewhere. Save just resaves over where you've already told it to save it. So the first time you save a document, it's always going to be Save As. Even if you hit Save, it's going to default to Save As because the computer doesn't know what kind of file you want, the, you want to save it as, the name or the place where you want to save it. So that's the difference between those two. This should be really called Save Over because all you're doing is saving over your previous work. Open and close. And again, I never use any of these. I use Quick Keys, so I don't come into this file tab very often. Here are some recent documents I was working on. And then information about the document. You can give um, permissions to a document. I believe you can password protect them. I, I again, don't quite get this detailed, but you can. And uh, manage versions. It can You can get very detailed. On recent, all the things I've been working on, a new document. And this is interesting because when you click New here under File, this is how you get to your template. And we're going to cover this in another video. But people often wonder, oh, how did I get that template again? It's always File and New. Print, again, I use Control P instead of Print, so I never come here for that. Save and Send. Wow, I've never used that. Let's see what that is. Ah, oh, kind of cool. All right, you have, you have some options there. Your Help and then more options, which these can get a little bit more detailed. And um, they're kind of neat to go through when you have time, but the defaults are usually fine. And then exit, of course, would exit the whole program. Home tab is your most commonly used buttons. So if you're going across, you have your clipboard here with a clipboard dialog box. It's actually not a dialog box. It becomes this pane but in all the other groups of buttons, this box in the corner opens a dialog box. Clipboard is the only one that I, that I know of off the top of my head that opens a pane. And so here you can see what, I, what you copied last. It's a pretty cool little feature, and we'll play with that a little bit more as you get going. You have your font group here, common things you've done in the font, uh, done to the text, but you can also hit that and get your font dialog box. And this brings up everything possible to do to the text. And also you can space, you can stretch the letters out, lots of different things. Okay, your paragraph it ha has everything to do with your spacing and your indents. Um, it's a shading. These are your borders. If you open that up, there's all your borders. And here it comes down to your master borders and shading dialog box that opens that. Here's your non-printing characters. Those are those. And styles are awesome. These are preset. I use them all the time when I'm in a hurry and I want to make the title look something, you know, bold or eye-catching. And It's just a quick way to format your document so it looks a little more professional and it's fast. And then here's your find, replace, and select for documents. That's all under your home tab. Now if you're not working full screen. When you shrink it up, you see how these buttons, they start to lose buttons. So if you're ever not using the full screen and you can't figure out why you don't have your buttons, that's probably why. They're there and they'll be there when you stretch it out. The insert tab is everything you can stick in a document. So cover page, we'll use tables and pictures kind of a lot in here. Um, a screenshot. Interesting. I've never noticed that one. Here's your header and your footer. If you didn't want to just right click and edit header, which takes you into the header too. A text box is like a floating box where you can place text and sort of float it around the page. Word art, we'll cover that in the um, portfolio cover lecture. Symbols are kind of neat. Um, there's more, obviously. There's always more. And you can go through all these different, you know, kinds of writing. And you can insert any of these. They have a bunch of languages and 
Here's all your special characters. Copyright, sometimes that's handy. All right, so insert anything you're gonna stick in the document. Page layout is how the whole document as a whole looks overall, the whole view. So you have a page, page break. You have your margins here, columns. Orientation is important because you can either have it standing up or laying down. So portrait or landscape. A watermark is the little gray background in the back. Those are handy. I just used that last week. Border colors, page color. You can make the whole page a different color. And here's your indenting and spacing. You, you also see that on the paragraph dialog box right here, indenting and spacing. So there's at least 10 ways to do everything in Microsoft Word. All right. Um, references you might use more in your English class. I don't go into them too much in this class. And... Um, they seem to be pretty handy though. I, I would love to have more time to learn all of these. I just haven't had a need. Mailings out is another thing I don't use, but I hear it's not too bad. <laughs> and labels if you're doing um, a mass mailing. I'm, I'm just not too familiar with that tab. I don't use any of that stuff. Review tab is important and good. There's your spelling here. You have a thesaurus. Uh, usually what I do though is I, if I write um, a word and I need to know a, a similar word, I just right click on it and I go down here to synonyms and it's really a thesaurus and it gives me lots of options and I can um, stick one in instead. So that's what I do. Comments are neat. You can uh, click here and add a comment and so you can say something like, wow, what a great word. So those are comments and then you can get rid of the comment. You can track changes, which means you, um, let's see, just put some text in here. Oh, okay. And I'll put my track changes on. So let's say I decide I don't want this text. When I delete it, it leaves the text, but it shows the person, hey, I said you should probably take this out. And maybe add this instead. So the line here at the side says, hey, there's been a change, and then the red shows you what the change is. That's track changes. And so you have to um, click it again to turn it off when you're done, and then the person can go through and either accept or reject changes that you asked for or that you suggested. So it's kind of cool. I use that a lot if I'm grading um, English papers. View is an important one and one you're going to use a lot. You have uh, print layout, which is what I work in most of the time. You also have draft view, which looks like that. You lose your margins and you lose any graphic picture. It just becomes a box with an X or nothing at all. So I tend not to work in draft unless I have a lot of text and I want to be able to see it easily. Um, I prefer to work in print layout. That shows me exactly what it's going to look like when it prints. And I'm not going to click it because it's going to go outside of the view and you won't be able to see it and you'll be frustrated. So um, I'll just let you try that one in your own. But it looks like a book and you flip pages. Web layout I never use because I don't use Microsoft Word to make web pages. I think that would be crazy, but I don't know. Outline view is a way um, of looking at a really long document, so I'm sure that students in law school would use outline a lot because they would write these long drafts of things. So here's your ruler. So that's under view. Remember, if it's something you can't see on the screen, it's probably in view. Grid lines navigation pane just so to go back and forth maybe if you have a long document here's your zoom the zoom is also down here if you click on the percentage you get to the zoom dialog box which is exactly the same so I don't tend to go to this tab to look for zoom I usually just zoom right here because it's always available and the views are also available down here too you have print book web draft all right, and you can try these. There's a view side by side. If you had two or more documents open, um, that will also work. You can switch between your open documents. And then macros are like automated um, uh, tasks. So let's say you make everything 
times New Roman 12 double spaced. You can make a macro. So you would hit that macro and it would go through and do those tasks for you. And then add ons is if you add something else to it. Um, so I don't, it looks like I have a custom toolbar or something. I don't, I don't know what that is. That's your ribbon. Up here across the top, you have a save, undo, redo. And again, I use the quick key, control Y for redo and control Z for undo. Minimize, restore or um, full screen. And then this closes the whole application. Right here is also um, the ruler, which is kind of handy. Scroll bar. These flip by pages, I believe. Zooming views. And then here you get a total page count. Number of words. Really? 15? Seems like there should be more. Maybe it's counting the whole thing as one. And page numbers. These have to do with your tabs. We'll cover that in another um, video. All right. That's plenty. Thanks.